Today I'd like to talk about that future. I'd like to talk about how the marriage between agriculture and industrial biotechnology can help us move from an oil-based to a bio-based future, to a bio-based society. Right now, whether we like it or not, oil is the lifeblood of our civilization. We use oil-based products as fuel for transportation, of course, but we also use oil to make the plastics that go everything, uh, goes into everything from the water bottle uh, you are drinking off to the chair you are sitting in. And we use oil to make the chemicals that goes into pharmaceuticals, computer chips, shampoos, cosmetics, car fenders, toothbrush detergents, just about everything, really. This is a relatively new way of thinking about oil. Until 150 years ago, oil was expensive to obtain and difficult to use. Then in Pennsylvania around 1860, uh, two innovations changed everything. Colonel Edwin Drake pioneered the modern oil well. Suddenly, oil was cheap. And then chemist Benjamin Silliman found a way to separate oil into its petrochemical components. Suddenly, oil could be used in all sorts of ways. 150 years later and thousands of innovations later, we are without question an oil-based society. Relatively speaking, oil remains cheap. But our addiction to oil means that cheap energy comes at a high cost. And there are costs that don't come with dollar signs attached. The thirst for oil forces countries to make decisions that harm their national security. And oil takes its toll on our planet. How do you put a price on the devastation along the Gulf Coast? We cannot live like this forever, and we won't. Oil, as we know it, is a finite resource, and it will not last. So, to put the problem simply, we need a viable replacement of oil. This replacement must come at, at oil's low price, but without its high cost. Where can we find it? Well, as you know, already today, we are generating energy from biomass on a tremendous scale. In 2010, the U.S. will produce 12 billion gallons of corn-based ethanol. Ethanol has already replaced 9% of U.S. gasoline consumption. But we can do even more with biomass than turn it into fuel. We can use biomass to produce the enormous volume of chemicals and plastics we consume each year. Earlier today, the World Economic Forum launched a white paper on the future of biorefineries. One of the conclusions is that sales of biofuels in 2020 will be an estimated $80 billion and another 10 to $15 billion for bio-based chemicals and plastics. When we include agricultural input, biomass production and trade, the total market for bio-based products is estimated to reach $230 billion already in 2020. That's why the World Wildlife Foundation estimates that by 2030, biofuels could reduce CO2 emissions by up to 1 billion tons of CO2. On top of that, biochemicals could reduce CO2 emissions by an additional approximately 700 million tons of CO2 per year. That equals the CO2 emissions of California, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey and Texas combined. But in order to tap into these markets, in order to achieve these carbon reductions, it is not enough to use crops like sugarcane, soybean or corn. We also need to take complicated types of feedstocks, corn cups, wood chips, wheat straw, used paper, and turn that into bioenergy and bio-based products. These things have long been seen as waste. Until recently, we couldn't come up with a good solution, a good use for them. As most of you know, these types of biomass are made of cellulose, long chains of sugars. And today we know how to break down cellulose into sugar, which can be converted into bioenergy and bio-based products. We know how to make the next generation of biofuels and bio-based products. This BioWorld confer uh, conference has confirmed that the technology is ready. It's ready for commercial deployment. 
The challenge we face is making bio-based products at less cost. Put simply, we can figure out a way, if we can figure out a way to bring down the price of a barrel of cellulosic bioethanol, we would have a carbon neutral replacement for oil. This is particularly important for the United States. Your country has only 2% of the world's oil reserves and uses about 20% of the world's oil. Back in 1973, U.S. imported 34% of its oil. Today, that figure is more than 60%. This constitutes a major strategic disadvantage for the U.S. But in a bio-based society, America has a huge resource advantage. U.S. produce more than 550 million tons of agricultural residue every year. That is 25% of global production. The Department of Energy estimates that the United States in 2030 could sustainably produce 90 billion gallons of ethanol. America's biomass resources extend far beyond the farm belt, from Maine to Montana, from the Gulf Coast to the Pacific Northwest. There are huge amounts of agricultural and forest residue, paper and pulp waste, solid municipal waste, all of which can be broken down into sugar as well. And in addition to the biomass and waste products uh, the U.S. already has, there are a great deal of marginal land that could be used to grow environmentally friendly biomass crops. New varieties of energy crops like switchgrass, miscanthus, and sorghum can grow in places that normally cannot support agriculture. Let me also add that the bio-based society will create American jobs. In recent decades, the agricultural, chemical, manufacturing industries have struggled. But from the farmers in the field to the manufacturers of harvesting equipment, from the operators at biorefineries to the workers at biochemical plants, biofuel and bio-based products will put people to work. According to Bio, advanced biofuels could create 800,000 new jobs by 2022 by fulfilling the RFS. Bio-based chemicals and plastics could create additional tens of thousands more. And because it makes sense to put biorefineries where the biomass is, these jobs won't be outsourced. outsourced. They are here to stay. I'm happy to say that in this country, both the public and private sectors have already taken steps to create and support a homegrown bioenergy industry. Policymakers recognize the role biofuels can play in the new energy economy. American companies are investing heavily in biofuel and bio-based products. Today there are about 70 planned advanced biorefineries in the United States. In the rest of the world combined there are only about 20 projects. This means that the race to be the world leader in bioenergy bio is America's to win or to lose. And as we, if we have seen with oil, the countries that control energy have a tremendous competitive advantage. But while the U.S. has a head start, the race itself is only just beginning. America's competitive advantage cannot be taken for granted. If the U.S. wants to be a leader in bio-based fuel products, it must build on the progress it's already made. I want to suggest three specific things America must do to help bring about the bio-based economy. First, the U.S. must direct research and development grants towards a new generation of bio-based products. Thanks to government support, we have made great achievements on advanced biofuels. Now we need to do the same thing for bio-based plastics and biochemicals. Second, the U.S. must begin to build the infrastructure that a bio-based society requires. For decades, the U United States has built refineries, pipelines and ports to help the economies of oil producing regions. Now it's time to do the same thing in rural areas by building biorefineries and creating up and downstream infrastructure. Third. The U.S. needs to invest directly in industrial biotechnology. Congress needs to enact a bio-based products production tax credit of equal parity to the support given other renewables. 